In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how to emulate an animated revealer by using the Particle Designer. We've done a tutorial showing you how to reveal a text using an animated revealer. These are often items that you either buy or design with other software. And I had some queries about, is there a way to design something like that inside of PowerDirector? Well, I experimented with the Particle Designer and came up with something that might work and even something you could probably make work better. So what I'd like to do is show you another example of an animated revealer, and then we'll show you how to emulate that, at least to some degree, by using the Particle Designer. And so that was a shot of an animated revealer. We're going to have a slightly different clip here and play it. If I play it without the revealer, here's what it looks like. We have Candy Sale drop down and then save 50% in the center of the screen. So let's try to make that save 50% to be highlighted by something that could be an animated revealer but is really a particle. In order to do that, we need to go to our particle room on the left side, press the F6 key, or click the icon on the left. Now, I can take any particle I find here and use it to start, because basically I'm going to delete everything I use. So I'm going to take, uh, let's take one called, oh, the airplanes. I'll drag it down and put it in the lowest track, track three. Now we're going to do some editing on it, so I'll double click on that. That gets me into my particle designer. I want to right click on each of the tracks and click on remove. We're going to remove every track and every particle. Now I have no particles in my particle designer. So now I'm going to click on the icon of the particle in the upper left corner by the preview screen. And that will open a file folder. I have a particle I created with three small dots. More about that in a moment. I'll click on that and open it. Now here I have my particle. Let's go back to the Add Delete Particles on the left side. I'll click the right arrow. And you'll see this is the graphic that I pulled in. It's a small PNG file made up of three dots, none of which are larger than four pixels by four pixels. I have two white ones and a blue one. And you can take any photo editing software and create a very small, very tiny little image that you can use in a similar fashion. But what I'm going to have to do is change some things about this. You notice it comes in default with the emit method set to point. I'm going to choose line. And once I have it with the line, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, left to right. And so this is going to march across the screen from left to right. I also want to make it narrower in terms of the band. And if I play right now, you'll see it'll come across the save 50%, but it's not exactly like how I want it yet. So we're going to tweak it a bit more. The next thing I want to change about this, you know, click on the stop, is I want to take this and we'll close the emit method uh, panel and we'll go to the particle style. This is a bubble, that's the default. I'm going to click to spread. Now when you notice they get a lot bigger when I'm using the spread method and we'll adjust for that in a moment. I want to get this perfectly vertical if I can. So I've got that style done. Now I need to go to the, all the parameters. Now I'm going to su suggest some parameters for this particular uh, tutorial. They're not precise, they're approximate. You might choose something slightly different, but it will show you one way in which you can make this work. I'm going to take the emit rate. Right now it's at 100, and I'm going to drag across the numbers, which I prefer to the up and down arrow, and just press 7. Let's take the max count. I'm going to maximize it. In this case, I will use a slider. That gets me up to 500. Now we're going to go to life. I'm going to shorten the life from 3750 to 1000. 
Then life variation, I'll leave it 100. Uh, that acts in my mind like a percent, so it's full percent. Size, I'm going to change. Now we did expand, and so they've got a lot larger than I want. So the size we'll start with is going to be below one. It's going to actually be 0 0.2. That will be my initial size. Then I'm going to take the size variation. It's at 100. I'm going to change it to 400, which is, in my mind, four times. And the speed will leave at 20. The speed variation at 100. The rotation speed, I'm going to add a rotation speed here. I'm going to do a value of 3. I'll just type in 3 again. And I'll leave this at 100. So now if I play this, you'll see quite of a different effect here. But it never seems to go away. Well, we're going to add some motion to it. So I need to click on the Motion tab at the top on the left side. Right now the default is no motion. And I'm going to click on the lower line at the bottom, the straight line over here. That will add motion. Now I need to move it up so it's approximately above my 50%. And we'll play this and see how far we're along. Not bad at all. Now if the timing was off on this in terms of revealing, what I would do, I'm going to pause it right here, is I will have to go back into the text and change the pace of the reveal from left to right. Let me show you how to do that. We're going to click OK here. And if I wanted to adjust the timing, I'll double click and get into my title designer. And then we have this save 50%. If, if I click on that track and I hover over it, you notice that I've set the beginning animation to wipe right. The longer this segment, the longer that takes to wipe right. So if it's too fast, I shrink it. I move a little bit to the left. I shorten it. If it's too long, I move it a little bit to the right. And that's how I can adjust the pace of the starting effect for the title. So we'll give you a finished example of this reveal using a particle to emulate the work of an animated revealer.